Welcome back to the channel everyone. So you join us on the set of a new feature on Bikes and Bits. We're going to call this our news hour. Maybe once a month we're going to report some bike related news and updates. And I'm joined today for the first of b, &B News with my lovely girlfriend Susie. So we're going to take turns in reading out some of the latest bike related news. Yeah, hi everybody. Thanks for having me today, Sean. Okay, so I'll kick off with the first thing we're going to talk about, and it's about sales of motorcycles in November 2021. So they've gone up. Um, this is great news for the industry. Um, it's good news for us enthusiasts to see more uh, people getting new bikes. Um, good news for the manufacturers as well, so they'll continue to develop nice new models. But they haven't just gone up, have they, Sean? They've really, really blown through the doors of any sales that were happened in 2019 or 2020 or 2020 in yes. the month of November in the month of November which is incredible it's actually 7292 let me get that right bikes were shifted in this previous month now let me give you some more facts of these I'm just going to shuffle my papers like a new like a typical newsreader of these Honda sold the most bikes with 952 uh, models shifted. Wow. Yamaha was just behind uh, Honda, but also just behind that was the relatively new brand, Chinese brand called Lex Moto. Remember we talked about yeah. potentially having a Lex Moto 125 for uh, right. you to practice on. Very good looking bikes and the quality of the Lex Moto has increased yeah. a lot. That's great. So they're really good actually. It looks a bit like a, a super sport, but then has this tiny little engine in it. So for someone like me, that is a little bit aware of what I'm going to be riding and looking like. I want that super sport girl on a bike kind of look. Yeah. Then that's uh, something really special to be able to not be on a crazy thousand litre while I'm learning. And they've actually added some nice touches to the Lex Moto uh, LXR125. Like they've got dual wavy discs up front. Mm -hmm. uh, previously it was just a single uh, disc. They've also put LED running lights on to make nice. it look yeah. like a top end bike. Lovely. So that uh, Lex Moto actually was, was third, and then Triumph and Royal Enfield came in fourth and fifth in the uh, selling chart of the wow. manufacturers. Now, they both had two really cool retro models that have been released, and that's the Triumph Trident, which is around the £7,000 mark. Mm -hmm. It's a triple, it's retro looking, it's well received. And then a bike quite close to my heart, uh, obviously we have a a uh, Royal Enfield Meteor 350 in the stable here at Bikes and Bits mm -hmm. and that was the best selling bike for Royal Enfield and it was actually the best selling individual model in the UK in the month of November with 284 sales. Wow. So people are getting on board with the Royal Enfield retro theme. Yeah. Um, okay so I'll hand over to my co-host. Fabulous. So we've got motorcycle news their awards, so they've got their 2021 awards that they've just launched uh, or just uh, released. So this is all about Britain's best bikes. So obviously this is really subjective. I always find awards kind of a bit strange sometimes because depending on why they're deciding what is a best bike, my best bike might not be Sean's best yeah. bike, it might not be your best bike. Subjective. But they've done an overall machine of the year and it was the Aprilia RS660. I want to make sure I got that right because this is a bike that I don't know a lot about but I think I'd like to have a look at it because if, if they're giving it the overall bike of the year it's kind of ticking lots yeah. of boxes. So you can check their news out and see kind of the allocation of why they gave those bikes uh, their, those awards. Now they get, they've got a few others, they've got like a best all-rounder, they've got a best 125 which the Yamaha one but the one that we're interested in over here yeah. is the best retro bike. Now, the last two years, the best retro bike has been the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, Interceptor 650 which is obviously a really, really brilliant bike. So surprisingly, I wonder what you can guess what the best bike is. Or I should say unsurprisingly, you should guess what the best bike what is. What have we been putting out videos <laughs> on this channel flat out so about? You believe it, guys. It's the Royal Enfield Meteor 350, won the best retro bike of 2021. And quite rightfully so. If you've looked at this bike, now I'm not that bothered about cruisers, they're just not my cup of tea, but when Sean unveiled you his, loved it. I was yeah. really impressed and I'm really, really loving it. I'm finding it really comfortable. It looks, it just looks fab. And he's got the Supernova, as, as you viewers know, top end, really, really like all the extra details. 
the paint on it, which is something, okay, a bit stereotypical, girls and colour, but he ordered brown and I thought, oh my gosh, brown, but wow, does it look good. It looks great. It's actually more like a glittery blonde, bronze. So. Yeah, bronze or copper. Yeah, like yeah. a copper. Yeah, sorry, copper. Somebody told me that colour actually originates from the original Royal Enfield 1950s paint scheme. And wow. it's, got, it's some kind of coppery bronze. It's, yeah. uh, it's got a much more interesting name than the brown that I've been sort of yes. dumbing it down as yeah, for the past not, six months. It's not brown, yeah. it needs a really funky name. It needs yeah. like a BMW paint name, like something really like mystical. Laguna Seca. So I'm going to work on that, I'm going to call it a name and then I'm going to email Royal Enfield and tell them to get on board. So over, back, back over to you. Okay, so the thing we're going to talk about next, uh, we're continuing with the retro frame and Kawasaki have released the Z650 RS. So there was, I think, a Z800, a Z900, and they made a more entry-level retro bike. It's based on the parallel twin that comes mm. out of the Ninja 650. Yeah. I know some people hate the term Ninja to be applied to the 650 <laughs> variant, but nevertheless, in some markets, they do call it the Ninja 650. Here, we call it the ER6, mm. um, and I actually owned that bike previously. The engine is just a, a derivative or an evolved version of that um, nice good beginner's engine really lots mm. of torque throughout the rev range I mean, yeah you really enjoyed that didn't i you? enjoyed so my Sean time had this on that is like first bike and it's a really really lovely like middle range you're not quite leaned over you're a little bit more right right it's it's not going to kind of you know it's not all the widow maker and all of that kind of stuff yeah, so. yeah and that it is looks an gorgeous so when i first met sean he was on that bike and actually on one of our first dates he turned up on that and i'll tell you yep. guys did the, did the, let's not underestimate yeah. the 650s the or that kind of uh, middle range boxes, bike yeah yeah you tick my boxes really liked <laughs> really liked that bike didn't you i did yeah um, so what they've done is they've incorporated that into the, the package. It'll have more upright uh, position, probably even more so than the Ninja 650. Mm. Price-wise, you're at just under eight grand if you pay with cash, so 7,850. Round LED lights, so the retro style, a little bit like the Meteor, actually, which is yeah. just showing how they've incorporated premium features yeah. into a bike that costs half as much as that. So you've got yeah. the round headlight with LEDs around the outside. And that's quite... Um... That's quite popular now, isn't it? This kind of retro thing. Like yeah. a few years ago, it was more sports all bikes. about super sports, yeah. sports, all of the kind of bug-like, kind of sleek. Uh, I do this. Um, this is the this is my front as a bike. Yeah. Here. This is my light. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that kind of feel. Whereas this is like going more retro. You can definitely see where we're going. Like best retro bike, obviously. Retro, retro. is so popular. Yeah, it's really going up. And talking about, I've done a video on sports bikes and how they're really in, in decline, which is a shame because I really love that oh, that, yeah. that segment of the market, but. The, you, you noted down there the Aprilia 660. Yeah. That's kind of reinventing the 600 yeah. mid-range sports bike. And to yeah. the, this might be an interesting fact, the best-selling sports bike mm. today is actually the Lexmoto LXR 125. That's sort of crazy. It's crazy, isn't it, how 125, yeah. but back in the day, everyone was the G, GSXR 600s, yeah. the R6. Um, but nevertheless, we're Ooh, on we're on R six. We're on the retro bandwagon, so we're giving you news about retro bikes. But back to the Z six fifty RS. You've also got uh, an analog instrument cluster with the Lidl, Lidl. That's a shot we go to. Needle. Needle. And it's got the seventies bodywork, and you've got the color schemes, which I think is green, harking back to the original Z. 1000 bikes which are all mm. classic bikes now yeah um, so Kawasaki relying a little bit on their heritage there the silver and the black and gray so nice bike good entry-level bike looks fantastic um obviously I'm into the Meteor if I wanted Royal Enfield but I would have considered that as another option but mm. it is double the money okay so we're going to change tack a little bit now for the next article and we're going to talk about smart motorways so many of you even if you're uh a car driver or on a bike you will have maybe encountered smart motorways i think just looking down here we've got at now 300 miles of smart wow. motorway um, and that's motorway without hard shoulders so if you're on a bike and you break down it's well hold on just to clarify just to explain what a, so a smart motorway is one of those motorways where there's no hard shoulder and the the lane, like the hard shoulder lane, can be used as an extra lane, I've which got then... I've some technical terms for Okay, this. well, there you go. Just in case people don't know, because you told me a little while ago, and I actually didn't know what a smart motorway is, because 
I don't drive around a lot. I teach yoga in this area and I have clients at home. Well, luckily so. you don't have to commute on the motorway. <laughs> Absolutely. <anymore. laughs> We've changed that. Um, so yeah, you've got these terms, uh, all lane motorway or all yeah. lane running. So that's yeah. our ARR. You can tell this is a government uh, mm. initiative, can't you? Because they've got three letter acronyms everywhere. DHS, which stands for dynamic hard shoulder. So that's yeah. that red cross that comes up and says that's you right. can't get run your which, vehicle on this which lane. Is just, I think it's just so dangerous. It's very dangerous. And this is what this report is saying. Basically, it's saying that if you break down in the hard shoulder, yeah. it takes 17 minutes for the Highways England Traffic Patrol to, close, to the lane. close the lane. And then a further 17 minutes for the patrol to arrive at your location. Wow. So, so it's 34 minutes sat with potentially people shunting yeah, you. You can think of an Arctic coming yeah. down that lane. You're yeah. on a motorbike. You, I mean, we would fly into the, over that barrier up, up yeah. onto the uh, grass verge. But yeah. it's very potential for accidents. So they've done some analysis and basically they're saying... Well, in some aspects, fatal accidents are less likely, but serious injuries have actually increased on smart motorways. So wow. what they're doing is is having now an inquiry and they've, uh, the government, uh, a, a select committee, has now started looking into this and it's actually mm. paused the further development of smart motorways and it's actually postponed the start of the 140 million. I mean, not only are they dangerous, a lot of money is going on them. Okay, so moving on from smart motorways, we're going to talk about um, the new bikes out in 2022. And um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the Yamaha XSR 700. Mm. And a friend of mine actually has one of these, Dave, who you've mm. met. He has one in Forest Green. Really, really yeah. likes the bike. Again, it's similar to the the Z650 that Kawasaki have got out. Yeah. It's a, a variation on the MT range. So use the same power plants, mm -hmm. but retro styling. For 2022, we've got new LED headlights. They're mm. implementing a larger 298 millimeter front disc, changing the suspension settings a little bit. They're incorporating the Euro 5 engine from the MT. So that bike will then fulfill the uh, Euro 5 regulations and the two new paint schemes. I think it's heritage black, mm. heritage white, and uh, I, I think it's white. a- White. White looks good in, yeah. on bikes. Yeah, it does. And another one, but um, I'll put that on the screen so I can't actually remember. And our final thing today, which I'm gonna hand back to Susie, is to talk about sports bikes. So, well, Pretty, pretty good topic for me. It is a good so topic the Fireblade has hit 30. Now this is a bike again that I didn't know a lot about until I met Sean, and it's one of his his favourite dream bike, isn't it? The Urban Tiger yeah. uh, paint scheme, or you don't call it the paint scheme, do you? On bikes, I'm I'm such a car girl. I think you do call it paint scheme. Okay, yeah. well the Urban Tiger yeah. looks beautiful. If you haven't seen it, do it at Google. I'll get Sean to drop a link to look at an Urban Tiger at the bottom. But, or a, a photo in the post. Yeah, we'll put a photo. Um, but it's beautiful, really, really different. I was a bit like, oh gosh. But anyway, they're doing this 30th edition model, which is gonna have a 1992 paint job. So I'm actually quite interested to see what that looks like. Is the pictures launched yet? For yeah, this? there is a picture out of it. It's white and a kind of bluey purple and red. Wow. So imagine a 1990s tracksuit. Yeah, it's yeah. That sprayed Which all over i actually had me and my sister had matching i can imagine kind of yeah. tropically colored tracksuits so i might need to try and try and uh, dig one of those out look pretty cool or not so as well as that they have a rear blue a rear seat which is going to be blue which is really cool um a funky tft animation while we're on the seat yeah can we just say that i was thinking that most people mm. probably wouldn't want to be perched up on the back of a 200 brake horsepower super sport but that said, when you sat on the ZX10R oh, with a seat about it. this big, yeah. you seem to get on quite well up there. So Yes. But I will just add that I thought this was normal, okay? So when we've been on test days, uh, I've sat on these litre bikes, Sean riding, me riding Pillion, and I remember quite a few people saying, like, oh gosh, like that doesn't look very comfortable. I don't find it uncomfortable at all. And I realise that this is because I do yoga. So point to Admit kind of note yoga. Yeah. that if you want to get a, as a pillion or even actually as a rider of a, a sports bike, you need to be much. doing some yoga. Even if you're just sitting a lot on a bike, yoga is great. So yeah, this is an advert for Good yoga plug. for sure. Good plug. Found it really easy. I love that 
position and I really like leaning forward. It makes me feel really secure. Like when I'm upright behind Sean, I don't find that as comfortable, but that's anyway another whole other video. Yep. But yeah, brilliant blue seat for me. So wonderful. It's gonna have logos on the tank um, and it will cost, well, I say and, however, it will cost more than the 23,449 mark, which is for a standard Fireblade SP. Um, so quite a lot of dollar, but you are getting over 214 brake horsepower. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's quite fast. It also comes with the Acropovic exhaust. Oh yeah, now, that's the main, that's which, actually the main part that I remember. Which is really nice. The actually. blue seat and the exhaust. Yeah. I'm all about the look of it and the noise. I love the Acro Acroprovic exhaust, if I could say we it, that's probably why I missed it. On the Sean put it on the Ninja. Now yeah. the Ninja had a nice noise. It was it was fine. It's not sports bike noise, but it was a nice noise. Hmm. When he put the Acroprovic exhaust on, I really like that. I like noise. I had <laughs> yeah. an M3. I've had a TTS. So I like something with a bit of noise in cars, and that goes over onto bikes. So yeah, typical kind of going for the noise and look. But here we are. So something to look out for. Something to maybe. Treat yourself or maybe just go and have a look at it and have a bit of an have a drool. We do this yeah. a lot. We go to bike garages and just kind of drool all over them and kind of set that. It's really, really good. Okay, I'm going to come back into yoga world here, but visualizing what you want. Don't ever think that you can't have something. Like that bike, if you love the Fireblade, then One go day, and have a look we'll at it. Put it in that visual. Sit on it. Feel it. Think about that's going to be yours. So, yeah. Great. Well, that that was the first ever episode of b, &B News. I picked a few things uh, that I thought would be interesting, and thanks a lot for tuning in, guys and girls. But yeah, we've we've done uh, first of the news, and we'll be looking to recap on the news uh, in the start of the new year when we've got another month of inter interesting stories to bring to you guys. Yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah, and if you like the content, obviously give us a like and please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more news on motorbikes. And right. stay tuned for a thousand subscriber mark, which I have to add is coming soon. Sean's pretty modest. So come on, <laughs> yeah. guys. Let's get to that thousand mark. We're going to have a big celebration. It's a bit of a surprise, but there's going to be something really fun going on on the channel when Sean gets to the thousand mark. So give him a like, guys. What he's doing yeah. is amazing. And um, thanks. Yeah, thanks to nice. all of you for watching and showing him that dreams can come true. And if you do what you love, people love it. And it's what the world needs. And Susie's taking me out for a meal when I hit 1,000 subscribers. That'll so be a first. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, right. That's a wrap. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Let's shuffle some papers.